Hey everyone, Matt with Catalyst Arms, and welcome back to Project Zero G. If you're just tuning in and not familiar with the project, this is where I wanted to take a Ruger Precision Rifle that weighed about 15 and a half pounds, is set up for competition, and get it to about 12 pounds or less. That way I could shoot it in the NRL Hunter Series matches in the Open Light Division. So obviously, I had to lose three and a half pounds. It wasn't easy. I ended up changing out quite a few components and modifying others. So please, stick around for this video, and I'm gonna share how I got there, and also what I learned along the way, which was quite a lot. So with that said, let's get started right now. The project basically had two phases. One, we're swapping out major components, got the majority of the weight savings. And then two, going through methodically, looking at every single little part possible, where a half ounce, an ounce, maybe even two ounces is possible, to get the remaining weight savings necessary. So first, let me talk about the big components. Let's talk about the proverbial elephant in the room. In this case, the barrel. The barrel on the stock Ruger Precision Rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor weighs about three and a half pounds. There's just no way you're gonna make any sort of significant weight reduction without swapping out that barrel for a proof research carbon fiber barrel. That alone accounted for a pound and a half of the weight savings. So if you're gonna to try to build a lightweight Ruger Precision Rifle, it's just not gonna be possible without one of these barrels. The great thing about this proof research barrel is it's made for the RPR. It's a drop-in component. So simply remove your existing barrel, thread in the proof research barrel, properly headspace it, Torque down your barrel nut, Bob's your uncle. So a quick note about the proof research barrel. Regardless of how light it is, it's kind of all for naught if it shoots like a stormtrooper. The good news is, with a few rounds down range so far, it looks like the barrel's gonna shoot fantastic. It looks like this is gonna be a better barrel than even the stock root precision rifle barrel and pound and a half lighter. So it's just a win all the way around. The obligatory cork on the fork safety briefing. And others which is obviously the process for installing the barrel was just an overview and you should absolutely have a qualified gunsmith install it for you. Earlier, I posted a YouTube short that explained the plan for the stock quite well. So rather than reinvent the wheel, here it is. Our competition rifle's been using a Magpul PRS. It's a great stock, it's got great adjustment. It's also about 30 ounces. That's entirely too heavy for an ultralight build and it's gotta go. The plan was to go back to the factory stock. It weighs about 25 ounces before modification. It's not a bad stock, and it has a lot of parts we could modify to see if we could get some extra weight out of it. But we thought of a better alternative to save some time and get the project going more quickly. We're gonna go with the Luth AR stock. These are great stocks. They've got great adjustment. They're comfortable to shoot, and they weigh about 10 ounces less than our original setup. So just by going to the Luth AR stock, we get 10 ounces of weight savings, and that's before any modifications. We'll probably do a modification or two just because it's fun and we'd like to do it, and we'll see where the stock ends up. Now, I went ahead and did some modifications, including removing some polymer, because one thing I did learn is you'd be surprised how much polymer actually weighs. So cut off a lot of the top stock and made this really light cup carbon fiber cover for it. And I did the same thing to the cheek piece. So I actually skeletonized it and actually removed the other side because I wasn't gonna shoot from that side of the rifle. And you know, that got some weight savings as well. Now, later on, I figured out I didn't need the cheek piece. So by removing the cheek piece, I ended up gaining another couple ounces of weight savings. So that was great. So the stock realized 14 ounces of weight savings over the Magpul PRF. Now it came down to the rest of the components and looking for ounces here and there. There were some obvious ones that needed some work. The handguard did some skeletonizing, cut some holes in it and crudely routed out some slots on top. That was disappointing though. I only got about an ounce of weight savings even after all of that work. So going forward doing it again, I'll probably put it in a mill and frankly skeletonize it quite a bit more and I don't think we'll sacrifice any strength so that's okay. Uh, the barrel nut ended up going back to the factory barrel nut. Now this is a Gen 2 so the Gen 2 barrel nut actually works perfectly with the fast track. It was designed that way and it saved about 1.2 ounces so just went ahead and went back to the factory barrel nut. I skeletonized one of the hammerhead bolt knobs. Well just drilled some holes in it. I think later on I would skeletonize that a little bit more it did account for about a quarter of an ounce. And I'm gonna talk about why all these quarter ounces end up making a difference towards the end, so bear with me. 
So another obvious place for the weight savings, of course, was the scope base. I mean, obviously, a long Picatinny rail provides a lot of functionality. It gives you the entire area to mount your scope or other optics to. But you really don't need it. I mean, you're basically using two scope rings, and I'm not going to put side-mounted sights or you know, lights or lasers on this thing. So basically cut out the center section of the scope base and did some selective you know, sanding slash material removal uh, on either side and basically got about 1.2 ounces out of the scope base, 1.3. So again, not a tremendous amount, but when you total it up over a number of components, it starts to add up. As a matter of fact, kind of spoiler alert, all of the other components, not including the stock and the barrel, accounted for 11 ounces of weight savings just by doing some material removal and that sort of thing. So those are the obvious components. Sort of phase two, or maybe even phase three, was basically looking for a half ounce to an ounce here and there in places you might not expect. So, uh, the grip. The Anarchy Outdoors Penguin Grip. It's a great grip, it's really comfortable to use, great for precision rifle. And it's not that it's heavy, but it is polymer. And like I said, you'd be surprised how much plastic actually weighs. So by, well, going a little crazy with the drill press, I was able to get about an ounce to 1.1 ounces out of the Penguin Grip. So normally, I use an American Precision Arms little bastard muzzle brake. It's a great brake and it works really well. It's also kind of heavy. So it weighs about 4.2 ounces and the factory Ruger muzzle brake only weighs about 3.2 ounces. So that was an easy decision. The factory Ruger brake actually works pretty well. So by simply putting that on, gained another ounce. Now one of the more surprising areas where you can hide in your rifle, aside from polymer plastic, in this case, the trigger group. The trigger group on the RPR has a steel housing. This weighs 5.2 ounces. It's actually fairly heavy. I mean, it's, you know, a third of a pound. So by simply swapping that out for the Timney, which has an aluminum housing, we save two ounces right out of the gate just by swapping the trigger. And frankly, I really like the Tim Timney trigger anyway. So swapping out the trigger was an easy decision. It's a better trigger, it's an easy upgrade, and it got two ounces of weight savings. So one change I had to make weight was replacing my Anarchy Outdoors titanium bolt shroud with the factory aluminum bolt shroud. So even though it's a titanium, it's solid. It feels really great and it works really well in the action. It's also heavy. So by going back to the factory bolt shroud, that got about 3.2 ounces of weight savings. So there wasn't any choice, I had to do it. So really at that point, most of the modifications of the rifle are actually done. So it modified the scope base, grip, rifle stock, handguard, barrel of course, uh, and the trigger, and swapped out the muzzle brake. But for the final ounces necessary to make weight, I ended up having to swap out the Leupold Mark V HD 7-35 with a Mark V HD 3.6-18. It's not like the Mark V HD 3.6-18 is a huge sacrifice, but I did have to go to that scope. So that got another four ounces of weight savings. Now the bipod was also an issue. Previously, I'd run the Skypod. I really like the Skypod a lot. It's very functional, it works really well, it's got great height adjustment, but unfortunately it's kind of heavy. So by going with our prototype Arca Rail to pick a tinny adapter and an Atlas bipod, that ended up saving about six ounces in the total weight. So at this point, you could consider Project Zero G a success. I managed to get a Ruger Precision Rifle that shoots really well to weigh 12 pounds or less for the NRL Hunter Series matches in the open light division. So the question is, am I done? I don't think so. And the reason why is, I want to find nine more ounces of weight savings. The reason I want to do that is, I want to shoot the Silencer Central Banish Backcountry. So, I like shooting suppressed. It's a lot more civilized and, well, the ROs certainly like it a lot better. So, if I remove the muzzle brake, I get three ounces to work with there. If I flew the bolt, because the bolt body is steel and fairly thick, I can probably find another two ounces there. So at that point, if I go with a fixed butt pad system, so I lose this bracket on the butt stock, lose the adjustment knob and go with a fixed butt pad, I'm probably gonna find another, I don't know, maybe ounce of weight savings, maybe more. And if I work with the adapter system here that I'm using for the bipod, I can hopefully find some more weight. I'm really trying to get to the point where I can use the Banished Backcountry. So that would just be a bonus, it'd be great. It's not gonna be mandatory for competing, but it's something I'm gonna try to do. 
So thanks for watching the video. I hope you found the information useful. If you have any questions, by all means, leave them in the comments section below or find me on social media and I'll be happy to answer questions about this build or any other questions about Catalyst Arms and our products you might have. So again, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Thank you.